Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be going over our official and final fall forecast because tomorrow marks the first day of meteorological fall. Anyway, before I get into things, be sure to check out our most up-to-date winter forecast, which came out about a week ago. You can check that out by clicking the button on the top right corner of your screen. It's going to show up there, and you can watch that today. We can find out what's underneath these question marks, but also you can find out what our updated precipitation forecast, temperature forecast, and snowfall forecast are predicting. Anyway, also, I would ask that you do like the video, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. For today's comment of the day, I want to know, where, what do you think fall is going to be like in your area? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Also, just to ask one more thing from you guys, if you leave your location down below and also like the video, I will be giving you guys some custom forecasts, as many of you as possible. So be sure to do that as well. Again, leave a comment down below with your location and smash that like button, and I'll be getting out to as many of you as possible. Let's get straight into things. We're taking a look at this precipitation forecast, and we have our first area of below average precipitation. The biggest change here actually is on the western end of things, where we've actually kind of slid this down the west coast a bit since our most recent update. Uh, so California and Nevada were expecting a little less below average precipitation for the more northern regions of those states, which is an interesting but noteworthy ch uh, change there for sure. Here is also our moderately below average precipitation region, and this is just where we're a bit more confident in it. This has also slid down a bit uh, more southward there on the western end of things, especially for California, very far southern Nevada there, and then also Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas. This was all the way up, I would say, about the halfway mark there of California on our most recent update before this one, uh, but now it's only taking about a third of the state up. So that is a pretty significant shift, especially for areas like San Francisco and, and more areas there in the more central regions of the northern regions of California. All right, now let's add our first above average precipitation region. And this one is going to be for the northwestern United States. And as you can see, this one already encompasses now uh, California and Nevada. It didn't really before, uh, but at this point, we've gone ahead and shifted this one further south as well. Most recent model guidance has suggested that some of these more northern regions uh, in these in these western states here, California and Nevada, could see some above average precipitation, whereas that was not the case before. So we've shifted that down alongside that model guidance that has suggested that. Uh, also, Oregon and Washington, as well as Idaho, most of those states, if not all of them, are also encompassed in this, uh, this above average precipitation region. And we also see portions of Wyoming and Montana included as well, and a little sliver of Utah, but it's not even worth mentioning because it's such a small region at this point. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to reveal a moderately above average precipitation region here uh, within this region and then also another above average precipitation region in the eastern United States in a moment. Then we're going to move on to the temperature forecast, snowfall forecast, and eventually overall forecast as well. All right, now here we are taking a look at this moderately above average precipitation region. And as you can see, it's mostly for the very western regions of Washington and Oregon. This should be obvious. They get a lot of storminess up there, especially in La Nina's, and we do expect to be in a neutral ENSO or La Nina, which should favor that above average precipitation for that region. This darker green region, all it means is that we're more confident that these areas will see above average precipitation than the surrounding regions in the lighter shade of green. Uh, but we're still fairly confident those lighter green shades will see it, but we're just even more confident in the darker green one. I hope that makes sense. Here's our second area of above average precipitation. And as you can see, it's mostly for a lot of the central United States, the Ohio Valley, the Great Lakes, and even the northeastern United States, as well as a bit of the mid-Atlantic as well. I think in this pattern we're going to be in, we could see a lot of systems, especially later in the fall, that are pretty similar to a clipper system. Uh, obviously not with much snowfall, especially earlier on. Uh, but, you know, you can get these storms in, in a, a more rainy uh, form, I guess you could say, and even Miller B nor'easters will be possible. You could see my precipitation forecast does include the northeastern coast of the United States there, and that was not the case in the most recent update before this one. Uh, so there has been some changes here as well. I think there could be some storms that track up the coast, but starting in the mid-Atlantic, not all the way down there by the southeast states. That would be a Miller A nor'easter. A Miller B nor'easter is going to be more halfway up the east coast to start things out, and then it moves up from that point. I think we could see some storms 
like that. And oftentimes in, in patterns like we've been seeing in, in falls like I'm expecting, that can be the case. So that is not something that I'm, I'm thinking is that outlandish whatsoever. I actually feel fairly confident about that as well. Let's go ahead and move on and start talking about that temperature forecast. We're starting out with the above average temperatures, and this has actually changed quite a bit here. Uh, we've extended this further up the west coast, as you can see, for this first shade and first area of above average temperatures. Uh, Arizona, Utah, Nevada, California, now Oregon and Washington, which were not included in our most recent update before this one, uh, but now is based on, again, most up-to-date model guidance has suggested that the West is going to be pretty consistently warm. The most, the, the biggest thing I pay attention to when I make these forecasts is uh, each individual month. So September, October, November. I'm the most confident in September and the least confident in November because of the amount of time that has to go by before we get to that month. Uh, so I kind of weight them that way, uh, but I do pay attention to each individual month. And the models have suggested that all three months will be warm in the West so that definitely makes me pretty confident that we will see warm temperatures out west. I hope that makes sense. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on. We're going to add a second shade to this in just a moment. And then we're going to go over the second area of above average temperatures. And then we're going to move on and talk about those below normal temperatures, snowfall forecast, and overall forecast very, very soon. So here is those moderately above average temperatures here. And again, we're just more confident in this than the surrounding regions for California and Nevada based on consistent model guidance. And for each of those months, like I said before, I viewed each month, September, October, November, uh, this area was pretty consistently uh, moderately above average or even further above average on each of those months, according to the models. So that makes me even more confident that they will see the above average temperatures. Here's our second area of those above average temperatures. And as you can see, a little bit of Southern Texas there, uh, not really worth mentioning too much. It's a very small region. Uh, but then also the entire Eastern seaboard should be seeing above average temperatures. This one's interesting because for September and October, uh, we saw above normal temperatures expected according to the models, but then November, we see below normal temperatures coming in. But again, November is the one we're the least confident in, so it's worth mentioning, but it's definitely not something you want to completely hedge your forecast based on. But at this point, it's safe to say they will have above average temperatures for the entirety of the fall once we look back at it overall. There will be colder days and colder times, and there will be warmer days and warmer times, but those warmer times will be longer and more uh, persistent than the colder times. That's how this works. Even California will see some co cooler times for sure. Here's the below normal temperatures though and as you can see for a lot of the north central United States especially we're expecting these slightly below normal temperatures. Here is the moderately below normal temperatures and again we're just more confident in this region. The interesting thing is the model suggested that September, October, and November all three would feature below normal temperatures for these regions here in the north central United States and that's why they're getting uh, the most confidence here. And then here's that far below normal temperature region or the one we're the most confident in. And all of the models for all three of the fall months suggested that this area would have pretty far below normal temperatures. So again, this is our most confident region for the below normal temperatures. Here's that snowfall chance forecast. We have below normal chance for the entire southern third of the United States. This doesn't have anything to do with the time of year because it's just snowfall chance. So this is based on your average. That's why Miami, southern Texas, and southern California are included. It doesn't matter if you're expected to get snowfall or not. We're just basically, is it above average chance or below average chance based on what your chance is? Uh, and the southern United States is expecting below normal precipitation and above normal temperatures. That equals below normal snowfall chance. The northern half of the United States ex is expecting some colder temperatures and some more above normal precipitation. This leads towards that above average chance at snowfall. Obviously, I don't expect Tennessee or Arkansas to get any snowfall during the fall. However, uh, based on the precipitation and the temperature, they will get an above average chance. Even if that chance is 1%, it might be 2% you know, now, but it still is not expected. It's just the chance has gone up. That's what this map indicates. The blue areas have gone up even further other than the lighter blue regions. That's why there's a darker region. Let's talk about that overall forecast. This is always the most exciting to go over. We're going to start out in the northwest. Stormy and cool there for that northwestern region. Again, we saw those colder than normal conditions expected and the more uh, stormy conditions expected. That's self-explanatory. Typical snow for the Rockies and a lot of the Cascades out there in the western United States. Again, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, pretty dry there for that tan region below there, actually. 
Uh, and we do expect some more wet conditions near California and Nevada, but um, I kind of kept this a little more broad. But uh, it, it will be dry in those regions because they don't really average getting a lot of precipitation anyway. Hot and dry down there for the more southern regions below there. Uh, I do expect above normal temperatures and below normal precipitation for a lot of those regions. We see dry and cool uh, down there for Texas, uh, New Mexico. That's especially in September and October because November we see above normal temperatures flood into this region potentially. That blue region is next to the white region that doesn't have any words. We do expect some potential snowfall in there, but there wasn't enough room to put the words in there. Arctic blasts. Here, for the north central United States, again, below normal temperatures for all three of the months, those Arctic blasts will become more potent as the months go on as we approach winter. Again, pretty self-explanatory. Much cooler for this more pink region down below there. Uh, this is just a little bit less cool than the area to its north, so that's why it's not Arctic blasts, but it's going to be pretty similar. Lake effect late going to be possible. Very warm lakes right now set up, and with this cooler air moving in over it, especially Arctic blasts, we could expect some lake effect snowfall maybe as early as October, but definitely once we reach November, that will be a possibility. And throughout the, the fall and winter months, I do expect above average lake effect snowfall overall. Frequent storms down here for this uh, green region, even despite that below normal precipitation. I wanted to point this out to indicate that, hey, even if you have below normal precipitation, it doesn't mean none. You're still going to see frequent storm in these areas that average getting a lot of precipitation regardless. Cooler for this darker blue region in the northeastern United States, especially in November, like I said before. Uh, September might be a little warmer than normal. October might be near normal. And then November should be below normal temperatures. And then for the red region, finally, we are watching the tropics because especially September and October, that's kind of the peak of the hurricane season. So we're going to need to watch the tropics throughout the, the upcoming months. For today's confidence tab, we're at a four out of six. This is like the most confident we can be in a uh, seasonal forecast because we have one day to go till it starts. So I feel fairly good about it. For today's comment of the day, yesterday I asked you guys, do you think Ida will go down as the most major hurricane of the season? And James Marr said, yes, I believe it will be the most major hurricane of the entire season. A hurricane might reach a category three or even four strength, but it won't be as impactful as Ida was. And I certainly agree there. I think everybody else does as well. For today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, John Ben Benick, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Lily Pan, and Donna Carnes, alongside our diamond patrons. Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Fuego, Gary, John Colisi, Dwight Phelan, and Stephen Grunenthal. If you would like to be a part of this exciting patron end screen of the day, you can do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I would also like to thank our channel members, Hair Farms One and Catbite as well. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.